video I'm going to show you how to use Shizuku to obtain almost root user privileges. So there's a step-by-step -step guide via wireless debugging and usually this is the way to do it. The way to do it is to go enable wireless debugging get on a Wi-Fi network and then go after you go to Shizuku enable that Wi-Fi network and start pairing with Shizuku it'll start searching and then when you go to wireless debugging again you use the pairing code enter the pairing code there and it should work and then you hit start and then it should be able to do what I do. Shizuku's running right now. Um, it's authorized three applications. Actually, it's four. I don't know why it says three. I'm using it in a terminal app. So I got Rish, you know, this and that. Um, those files are actually in a folder that is accessible to the uh, shell. And I've invoked Rish before it works, actually. It gives me a different shell, uh, like a different type of it. it. It sends the commands through wireless debugging. Like, it sends it through ADB. And then it actually goes through as system. So, like, this is a way around trying to get root all the time. And, like, you know, it's nice to have root and stuff. You know, if it's nice to have magis to do that kind of stuff. Like, I have a crappy phone that does that. But, um, this is a phone that I can't root because I want to be able to have knocks or I want to be able to have resale value as an unlocked phone that is not, like, bootloader unlocked and, you know, totally developer-friendly only. Right now, I'm running Termix. It's weird, like, I invoked uh, Rish, and it gave me a separate prompt, just like that. And then I can just exit out, and then I'm back to, well, user land, with little, little tiny files, so. It's interesting how this stuff works. Um... Yeah, I haven't really played with it too much yet, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be useful for all sorts of applications, like uh, maybe even user land if I enabled it, um, because you can have different distros on here. Um, what I like is the fact that you could have XFCE and... That that costs like two dollars or something, but like you have XFCE uh, running on Ubuntu and actually get it to run as system on your machine without root, without destroying everything. Like it's actually possible. Um. Yeah. So, I mean. That's Shizuku for you in a nutshell. Um, I've authorized a bunch of apps already. I've authorized it for using in the terminal. It, it actually, when I invoked it, it actually asked if it wants to have, um, if it wants to have uh, access in the future. So it'll execute everything through Shizuku right there. If you can read that. So, this is all interesting stuff. The way Shizuku works is is very interesting. Um, you can start with wireless debugging, just like I said. Enable your developer options. This doesn't require you having root. But you can actually get like system. And uh, you can start using this stuff. Like... 
gives you a different shell. Like the whole point of this is it helps normal apps use system APIs directly with ADB root privileges in a Java process started with that process. So it, it basically gives you access to a host of different um, different uh, properties, different uh, a whole host of different um, I guess different things you could get access to at some point. And uh, and there's a big list of them. There's like how many different things you can get through this API. Um, let's see. I was just at it. There we go. So it says here we can see um, how many different um, how many different things you can get access to. I think it's in the manager. No. It is actually I'll go to the user guide and actually learn more. There we go. And it says here there's other things you can be doing with this stuff. The developer guide shows you. Let's see, here's the GitHub. The permissions granted to ADB. There they are. So these are all permissions you get access to. Every single one of them. Every one of them. You'll get access to all of them. And if you need access beyond that, you can request it. It's not like it's the shell's going to give you that type of wonderful permission. But it, it gives you quite a, uh, quite a host to choose from. You know, it's, it's quite a, a big smattering of different permissions you get access to like you could get stuff that could mess up your phone even like you know test biometric or or uh, access tv descrambler or uh, you know anything that you can think of like you can actually access it through a system shell and it goes through adb and it acts like system so again we're showing you exactly what you get access to through shell, shell through ADB at least, and uh, this running as a system service. So those are the permissions granted. I have yet to even invoke any of them yet, but the old method was extremely slow, need to process text, and the possibility limited to available commands. Even if ADB has sufficient privileges, the app requires root privileges to run. Shizuku runs differently. So right now I've got a manager. It's actually using Termux for its manager. And uh, I don't need root. I don't need root. It's acting like the middleman to receive the request from the app. It's sent to the system server and sends back the results. So we're using a system APIs with higher permissions and the app, it's almost identical to this use of system APIs directly. So there you are. And then there's samples of how to use this and invoke it. Um, there's the adding dependencies. And uh, the binders, you can use SUI, but that requires root. And then Shizuku, well, it asks you to actually invoke it that way under permission. And you could uh, add your different permissions as you need. Requesting permissions, you can request them. Different ones for Booleans here even. 
check permissions. And then uh, there's a difference between ADB and root. Um, you can find out your privilege. Your level of privilege is, is just done by this command right here. And privilege is determined by Android permissions. So again, we go back to the manifest state, the manifest of shell and all the permissions you get access to. It's quite a bit. So these are all of the development that's been going on with with Shizuku. It's a really great app. It really does work. You don't have to root your phone. You can get access to some fun stuff. System UI tuner even. Like you could make your phone do weird things with the status bar. Show clock seconds. But it doesn't even work on this phone because it's Samsung. But I mean, there's ones that actually do work even in persistent options. In fact, I gotta disable that. <clears throat> so, I mean, this is just the beginning. Um, there's even more tools that are being set out by Suzuki itself. There's a way to get rid of different system apps. You can uninstall system apps even. It shows you all of them. And it shows them what, what those apps do if you're truly trying to get rid of it. Like if you want to get rid of AOD, it'll get rid of that functionality altogether. But you'll save that much um, space in your your ROM so if you're building a ROM from from stock this would be the way to get rid of all the bloat before you go on and you you commit to uh, getting rid of the bloat but I mean you don't get rid of things like sim toolkit or sim factory app um, yeah or that sim toolkit um, yeah your bank actually needs it to authenticate you or the KMS I mean there's and then there's lots of other services that Samsung uses that you shouldn't even mess with at all there's green ones and red ones and then like there's ones that are like well I don't know there's 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 knocks on here a secure element um, uh, SIM cards basically separated apps these are third-party apps and then you got stuff like not smart switch but Knox it's in the case there it is your your KLM KPE Knox license manager license but they're now being provided by Samsung and their Knox platform for enterprise keys so it's through KPE, KPE cores right here. Knox platform for enterprise. I could get rid of that right now and uninstall it. Or I could just get rid of it. But it says recommended to uninstall. So I, I'm not going to do that just now. I'm going to keep it pretty much stock. Unless I intend to actually reset the whole phone and start from scratch but you can destroy your phone you can do all sorts of wonderful things um, and bypass security uh, very well hope you guys enjoyed uh, hope you guys have enjoyed developing apps and making calls to this new API um, that could change your world and how you view Android Android security at its core.